Hey everyone, this is Josiah from Grace Note Forge. So I have a project coming up that's going to require 3D modeling a signet ring. Uh, so I thought I'd show you guys how I go about doing that in case anyone's looking to do something similar. Uh, for this build, I'm going to be using Blender version 2.93.3, but the version I'm sure doesn't really matter. You can use uh, older versions if you want. Uh, so I'm going to start off by just selecting everything in the default page and just deleting it. We're not going to be needing any of that. Then I'm just going to hit shift A to bring out our mesh. I'm going to use a circle. Uh, then going into this little drop down to the left, I'm going to change the vertices on this circle to 12 and the radius to nine millimeters, which should come out to a diameter of around 18, which is about a size eight ring for uh, US measurements. Uh, I'm going to change the rotation on the X axis to 90. And just to make everything a little easier to see, I'm going to get rid of the floor and the 3D cursor. All right, so to start things off, I'm going to select everything, go into edit mode by hitting tab, and then going into side view by hitting three on the numpad, I'm just going to extrude this out by hitting E and then hitting Y to just extrude on the Y plane. I'm going to bring this out to about negative six. It really doesn't matter. And then I'm just going to select all these vertices in the center. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to hit Alt Z to get into X-ray mode. Um, and you can get into X-ray mode by this little double square symbol at the top right of the screen uh, to just toggle that on. And that ensures that when we scroll over all these vertices, we're selecting the entire thing, not just the side that we can see. So I'm then going to hit H to hide all of those. And then just grabbing this bottom vertice, I'm going to uh, turn on my proportional editing and change the shape of the fall off to a sphere. Now by hitting G and Y to move that on the Y plane, I'm just going to move this a little closer to the center and then scroll up my mouse wheel to adjust the size of the fall off. I want it to be around there. So that's looking pretty good. I can now hit Alt H to unhide and Alt Z to see our geometry. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is going back into object mode, I'm just going to apply a mirror modifier. And I want that to be on the Y plane. Uh, and you can see it's it flipped in the wrong direction. It went to the Z axis. And a way to fix that is just to, while everything is selected, hit Control A and just apply that rotation that we did earlier. Looks like it didn't apply. Uh, so now when we change this back over to Y, it should go in the correct plane. All right, so now I'm going to add a solidify modifier just to bump up the thickness of this. And I'm gonna shoot for something around two millimeters. Uh, maybe something a little bit more. We'll go, uh, yeah, 2.2. And then I can add a subdivision surface modifier to increase the resolution of our mesh. I'm gonna bump that up to five. And it's looking pretty good, but it is very plain. Doesn't look anything like a signet ring right now, uh, but we're going to change that. But first, 
Um, if we go back into edit mode, you can see uh, if I select everything and then go into x-ray mode, you can see that everything that's highlighted is the current mesh that we have to, to work with and to modify. So everything else, this smooth geometry uh, is only being created by these modifiers. So in order to work with them, uh, we first need to apply these. So we're going to go back into object mode. And then we're just going to apply the mirror modifier first and then our solidify modifier. That way when we go back into edit mode, you can see we have this extra geometry to work with and that's what we're going to be adjusting. Uh, so before we go any further, because everything is nice and symmetrical how we started this, I'm going to go up to the top and just enable the mesh symmetry for the X and Y axis. Uh, that way when we go to move anything, uh, it does it equally on all the sides that are symmetrical. So I'm just going to start off by going again into X-ray mode, um, hitting one on the keyboard to turn on vertice select. Then just select these top vertices and hitting G and then Z. I'm going to bring this up to give us the thickness that we need on the top of our ring. And then I'm just going to go through and kind of uh, adjust to these by eye. It's not entirely necessary to be very precise at the moment. And do the same on this side. Alright, that's looking pretty good. So next I'm going to select these top faces by hitting shift and selecting them. Uh, then I'm going to go back into front facing view by hitting one on the number pad. And then pull up the loop tools. Uh, loop tools is something that does come with Blender. Uh, if you can't find it, it is in your preferences. Under add-ons, if you just look up loop tools, uh, you can check this box and you should be able to get these tools. So um, with these top faces selected, I'm going to hit flatten. Uh, then I'm just going to hit two to go into edge select and select these four edges in the center, right click and dissolve edges. Uh, we're not going to be needing those and it'll make things a little bit easier in the next step just to get rid of them. So we're then going to hit three again to go into face select, grab this top face, and then by hitting I, I'm just going to create an inset. We're going to type in 0.4, see how that looks. That's not bad. All right, so it's looking pretty good, but I do want to adjust a few things. One of the things I want to do is go back into edge select. By holding alt, I'm just going to select this inner ring. And if we check this box that says edit mode over here to the right by our subdivision surface modifier, uh, we can see what vertices we're actually working with a little bit more clear. Again, I'm just going to select these inner rings, going into side profile view, and just move them in the Y axis out just a little bit. So that looks pretty good. Turn that on again. So one thing that we're going to need to adjust is right now the inside of the ring is just a little bit too smooth and that's because the surface modifier is kind of taking the average of these edges on the, the inside and this edge right here 
and smoothing them out. So to make them a little bit more crisp, uh, we're going to need to select this edge again. And we can do a couple of different things in order to make this inside edge a little sharper. Uh, we can either do Shift E, which would create a crease on this edge, do it something to around 0.4, and that would look pretty good. But it really is kind of more beneficial if you can to use a, a bevel, uh, just because I feel like it gives you a little bit more control. Uh, the, the crease method is really useful if you don't want to overcomplicate your mesh. Uh, you can see when you go to x-ray mode, it can sometimes be a little difficult to see where things are when you have several different edges kind of stacked up. So uh, the crease method sometimes makes it a little bit easier, but it doesn't work for everything. So uh, I'm just going to undo that and then create a bevel by just doing control B. And I'm going to do the same size as before, 0.4. And that's looking pretty good so far. Uh, but there is one thing that we can change just to make this a little bit more uh, user friendly when this is actually cast in metal. Uh, and that is to take out a little bit of this section inside the ring. Um, and that, that really does two things. It makes the, the ring just a little bit lighter. It also makes the cost of the ring a little bit less because you're not going to need so much material to fill in this section. So uh, what we're going to do in order to achieve that is go back into edit mode and then I'm just going to turn off our subdivision modifier for now just to to see a little better what we're doing and then hitting three for face select. I'm going to go through and just select all these faces that I want to bring in. And I'm going to hit I to inset these. And right now we're looking at the, the thickness of the wall on the inside. And this might be a little easier to see than explain. So I'm just going to do something around one. Um, and then I'm going to do that again for a face that we can bring up. And I'll do 0.4. Now if I go back into front facing view, with these faces still selected, I'm just going to go into x-ray to kind of see what we're doing and bring those faces up into the ring. And you can kind of see what I'm trying to do, but uh, it's really a little easier to see if we turn on our subdivision and then check this little button that shows the modifier results so we can see this curved edge. So I'm just going to, again with those faces selected, hit G and then Z to bring them up into the ring. And I just want, I want to bring it up so that this side is about the same thickness as the bottom of the ring. And I can hold shift to kind of better control that. So that looks pretty good right there. Um, but this is a little bit too thin near the top. So we're going to do the same thing that we did earlier with the top of the ring and go back into face select mode and just grab these faces on the inside top of the ring and flatten those. Now I can adjust the height of the inside top of the ring by just hitting G and Z. looks pretty good right there. I'm 
All right, so that's not too bad. I'm just going to thicken this whole ring up by selecting everything and scaling it in the Y axis just a little. And that looks pretty good. All right, I'm going to leave it there for now. Uh, you can really see that didn't take too long. It is worth noting if you're going to actually 3D print this ring, you will need to apply this subdivision modifier beforehand because we're still working with what would be this lower poly geometry. So if this is as far as you want to go, you can just apply this and it should be ready to print. Uh, but I'm just going to save it here for now and I'll end up using this model for a future project. Uh, so keep an eye out if you're interested in seeing what I do with this model. And as always, thank you for watching.